Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm the founder of Code of the Future. And today we are going to be continuing with the Rust course. So as usual, I'm going to put my glasses on and I'll move you onto the screen. Okay, so previously we have downloaded and installed Rust. We have then written a little program uh, in Rust, which we can see here. I explained everything that's going on in this code. And then we learn about Rust C and how you compile your Rust file and then how you execute it. This is just, this everything on the screen here is just kind of checking what we did last time. So we moved the directory from the desktop and then into our Rust tutorials folder, which is just here. And then we looked inside that. And because we'd previously compiled, you know, previously, these two things were here. I then thought, well, just to check that, you know, we, we haven't changed anything in the file, we're just gonna Rust C, which basically compiles our main.rs file into this main file here. And then I ran the main file and it says, hello world, how are you? So that's what we did previously and basically just getting you started in Rust. Now, something I'm gonna show you today is what is known as cargo. Now this is written on the document, which you'll find here. So let's go from introduction here. Just under hello world, we have hello cargo and cargo is Rust's built build system and package manager. Uh, most Rust stations, Rust stations are basically people that absolutely love Rust. Um, <laughs> that's kind of what they've called themselves. Um, so they are Rust stations uh, and they use the tool to manage their Rust projects because Cargo handles a lot of tasks for you, such as building your co code, downloading the libraries your code depend on and building those libraries. So you'll see here we've done this thing where we've gone, okay, let's move our directory into desktop and into Rust tutorials and then from, you know, say we had more folders in that, we then go in and and, and that's basically what we've just done. Cargo has this this kind of built-in system where it will find the file that you want to compile and it will do just a load of things for you in such a shorter way. Uh, and that's something that, that I'll show you. So that was a bit of a summary from what we've done before, but now we're gonna move on to Cargo. Okay, so first things first, I'm just gonna clear my terminal just so we can start fresh. Now Rust uh, has Cargo, it should have Cargo installed already. So what you're going to type is just cargo dash dash version and this will come up with a version of cargo uh, and hopefully that works for you cargo should be installed when you know when you install rust it should be on on there already so what we're going to do now is use cargo to initialize a new project so something you know to check what kind of directory we are in you just type in pwd uh, and this is the same on mac or linux or or Windows, and this tells you where your directory is. So perfect, we are in the directory Rust tutorials, which is exactly where, you know, I recommend, you know, to create a folder where you can do all your coding just so have things in the same place. So we are in the right directory. And now what I want to do is in this directory, that's where I want to create my new project. So all we're gonna type is cargo new, and then we're gonna type in whatever you want to call your project. So because I'm splitting kind of this, this series into different sections, I'm just gonna call them tutorial three. Uh, and this is kind of, this will also work for the collated full video that I'll be doing. So we are kind of in section three, tutorial three. So there we go, cargo new tutorial three, and it says created binary application tutorial three package. Awesome, so it's done it. So now if I was to go, okay, let's type LS. There we go, we have tutorial three. And if I was to go to where my code is, We'll see here we have tutorial three. Inside tutorial three, we have a SRC file, which is our source, kind of where our code goes. And you'll notice there's a main.rs file. So if I was to open that, it automatically comes up with this. Cool. So what I'm going to do for the sake of the video, I think, I'm just trying to think about, I don't want to get this confused with this. So what I will do is I think I will just copy all of this. Now this code will be on my GitHub. I'm going to upload everything to my GitHub. So there is a link in the description box. So if you, you know, you need all this code, then there will be a link in the description. So what I will do is I'm just going to briefly just kind of previous code. And that's just so that I can add, upload this to GitHub. And we're just going to move these two main files into previous code. So then all we have, I'll just move that down there with all the different videos I've been doing. So now we just have our Rust tutorials. Inside there we have our tutorial three. Inside tutorial three we have our source code. Inside our source code is our main RS file. Now I'm just going to cross off this because we're no longer using it. It's in a different place. I'm going to click don't save 
Okay, cool. So I realised that was a bit of moving around, but that just shows you how you can kind of, I guess, move things in <laughs> in Rust. Okay, cool. So we've done all that. We've created our new project, Rust uh, Tutorial 3. So as I said, this is SRC. That's where our source code goes. That's basically wherever, you know, we type our code. We have the main RS file, which is exactly what we had before with the hello world. We have a git ignore, which it's used for if you have like a git project uh, linked up to it, but we're not going to be doing that just because it adds a bit of kind of complication to it. So that might be something that I'll look at in, in you know, in the future. But for now, we, you kind of just need to ignore this git uh, file because we're not actually going to be doing anything with git. And then we have this cargo toml. Now toml stands for Tom's obvious minimal language. And essentially this file is where any dependencies that, that we may have. So here, any dependencies will go will go below this. Um, and we have the package, we have the name, version, edition, and any dependencies we would have would go below here. So I can cross off that for now. Uh, I won't save it because I haven't changed anything in it. It's just there, cool. cool. So you may be thinking, wow, we've got this, you know, we have, let's have a look again. We have the Rust tutorials. Inside that folder, we have tutorial three. And inside that folder, we have the source folder and inside that folder that's where our code is so you think you may think okay well how do we access that now intuitively i'll just clear the screen so intuitively we'd say let's move the directory so again cd in fact let me just check where i actually am so we're in rust tutorials already so i don't need to re-cd into desktop we're in rust tutorials so now within rust tutorials i want to get to let's do it piece by piece. I want to get to tutorial three. So then I would say CD tutor tutorial three. I appreciate I say tutorial in quite a Yorkshire way. Um, <laughs> I believe, you know, that the, the correct English is tutorial, but I am very Yorkshire and I say tutorial. So apologies for the accent. <laughs> but anyway, CD into tutorial three. And then within tutorial three, we need to access SRC, so then we'll have to do CD SRC. Now we can say, okay, LS, inside there we have our main.rs file, and as before, we just do rustc main.rs. Again, type in LS, which we'll see what's happened, and it's taken our main.rs file and it's created an executable file, which we can then run. So now we run this. There we go, hello world. Now I'm just going to add some text onto here. Um, hello world code of the future here i don't know i'm just i'm just thinking of random things to say um just so it's a little bit different every time we say hello world so we know you know like, as i said previously if i was to run this main file again the changes that i've made here if i was to save it won't you know they won't pop up and that's just because you have to redo the whole rust c thing so i'll just do rust c main.rs and then we'll do forward slash main okay so now we have hello world code of the future here cool so that was quite long that, you know, we had to CD into about three, probably four different folders counting desktop and it's a bit tiring. You know, if you're coding, you don't really want to be doing that. Um, you know, it's quite time consuming. So what I'm going to show you now is basically how we can use cargo to no longer have to write Rust C every time we want to compile something. OK, so I'm just going to click clear and we're going to just talk you through some extra features. Okay, so to skip all of the compiling and running and kind of all of the effort that you have to go through, you know, with Rust C, it might not seem like a lot of effort, but when you have folders within folders within folders, it, it you know, it becomes quite a bit of an effort. So I'm going to introduce something called cargo build. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to check my directory is in the right place. So PWD, I'm in Rust tutorials. Now I need to CD into tutorial three. Let me just check that that's what we've named it. Tutorial three, yep, yeah, perfect. So we need to CD into tutorial three. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. And now once we are here, we're gonna do cargo build. Now what this does is it goes into the relevant folder where our project is, so tutorial three, and it will compile this code that we have here, this main.rs. I just deleted the executable file that we had previously when we did Rust C, just to show you what happens. Uh, essentially it just does the same thing as the Rust C. So cargo build, doing all this building, it compiles, it finish, and now once we type in ls, which shows us what's in our tutorial 3 folder, you'll notice we have a few more things in here. So we have cargo lock, cargo toml, src, and target. Okay, so these are just a few different things. You don't really need to know much about them now. You know, source code is essentially 
the source code. Tom always has before and lot. Yeah, you don't really need to know too much about it. Target is where our code will be though, once it, you know, the executable file is. So I'm going to do the long way and show you, okay, well, let's CD into target from tutorial three. Now within CD, within target, sorry, we have a debug folder here. So I'm going to CD into debug. And then once I'm in debug, let me have a look what's in debug. Our, there we go, tutorial three, that's our thing that we want to run. So we're in CD debug. And then all we're going to do is run our, I think it's, what was our thing called? Tutorial three, I believe it's called that. And we're going to run. Okay, now it says hello world. Okay, cool. Right. I forgot before when I was creating a, just messing around, I forgot to put code of the future here. That's what I'd had previously. Um, I just did a little bit of playing around just off screen, just check everything was running correctly. Okay, so we're just going to do all of that again. Now, what I will show you is basically a shortcut that means you don't have to, you don't have to do all of this target, you know, finding target and finding it. And it's a shortcut called cargo run. And this compiles and automatically runs the code straight away. So if I type in cargo run, it compiles, it finishes, it runs and amazing. Hello world, code of the future here. I forgot to save with the exclamation mark. So again, let's do it again, cargo run does the compiling, does the finishing, hello world, code of the future here. So notice how before when I just had hello world here and I forgot to amend the code of the future here, I would have then had to redo the whole CD into the target. We're going to have to then find that. I'm going to have to then rust C and just spend a load of time messing around. Really what you can do is quite literally change a few things here. I'm going to add a load of E's on the end. Enthusi oh enthusiastic it's making me purchase sublime um okay and then just do the exact same thing so cargo run there we go code of the future here amazing so that is basically how you skip over having to use rust c now i'm just going to walk you through what we did here so i'm just going to add this in comments so um cargo tools okay so so to so creating a a new project we just use the cargo new and then project name that's what you you know that's this here just means you put it you input it yourself so cargo new project so that's what we did we created a new project the next thing we did was built a new project and for that we just did cargo build and what that did was we first had our tutorial three we had a few things in here so i think we had the source let me just minimize a few things here so we had the source code with our main rs and we had cargo i think tomol and git ignore if you remember and then from there we ran the project so running and compiling your project and that is simply cargo run so it's quite simple i appreciate this video may have gone through it in a lot of detail <laughs> um, so i just wanted to kind of summarize everything there for you so we created a new project built a new project within that uh, and ran and compiled it which is awesome now the final thing that i just want to show you is something called checking your rust file so i will clear this let's go down to the bottom and i want to introduce to you something called cargo check now cargo check essentially goes through your rust file which is here uh, and checks before you know this, this doesn't compile it it will say to you okay before you're going to compile which is what we were doing here the cargo run oh my, back, my laptop's about to die that's fine this video this uh, this section's almost finished um so essentially it'll go through and it'll say before you compile we'll just check check it over to check there's no errors so i'll type in cargo check and it says finished in 0.35 but let's say i don't know i made a bit of an error and i forgot to put i forgot to close the quotation mark so all of this is obviously just one one whole mess here now let's see if i'm just gonna click save and i'm gonna put cargo check and again here we go so it pops up with an error unterminated double quote string that's the error so quite simply i just need to put the quotation mark oh sorry sorry it's an unterminated double quote string so it's saying here well you haven't actually quote what it's seeing here is this quotation ends with this quotation and then this quotation should have an end here but really what we know is we've just forgotten the quotation mark there cool so that's cargo check and again i think i just saved that let's save it and i click the type cargo check there 
all done in 0.43 seconds. So I'll just add that down here, check in your Rust file, and that is cargo check. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll change that to project name, just so you're aware. Okay, awesome. Awesome, so those are kind of the main cargo tools. Uh, again, it, this is mentioned here in the Rust programming language uh, document. So if you're somebody that likes to read, then there's all of this that you can talk about, but essentially they talk about the summary of things, which I believe are here. So we have cargo new, cargo build, cargo run, cargo check. Awesome. So those are the main cargo tools. In the next section, we're going to be looking more into actually coding. So now we've learned about cargo, how we use cargo, how we can build on variables and all sorts of things. So yeah, stick with this tutorial series. I've got some more exciting things to show you. So that has been the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give the video a big thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to the channel as well. There is also a Patreon that I've set up and a donation page if you fancy checking those out. The links will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.